So, uh, yeah, when Oliver's playing with trucks, you know, he calls me and says, Daddy, Josh didn't drop his trail in Gastonia. He's actually over here in Jonestown, Bobtail, and he's playing <laughs> playing with his trucks and cars. He's, he's, he's been listening to you. Yes, he's yes. Been Life by the Mile, delivered by Freightworks, is your 30-minute weekly podcast adventure. You'll hear the heart, soul, and passions of those who keep America moving. Join us. We're ready to roll. In this episode of Life by the Mile, delivered by Freightworks, we have Silas Freitas. He's the dispatch manager, and uh, he's going to give us an incredibly interesting insight into how he manages a team of eight driver managers, challenges that they face, why he loves his company, and we'll even get to hear a little bit about Bria and Oliver, his little family. It's a, it's just a heartwarming story, and we know you're going to enjoy it here on Life by the Mile. It's so great to have you here. Thanks for having me, Butch. Of course. And you know what? I always feel, I have to say this, a little bit guilty whenever we have somebody that's on the front lines of dealing with all the things you deal with every day to take even 30 minutes to come for these podcasts, but you said it was going to be okay. Yes. I know you care for your drivers and for your driver yes. manager team. So right. uh, let me let me start out by asking you this. How in the world did you get to FreightWorks? Oh, that's actually a very interesting and informal kind of thing, the way you know everything developed. I was working for a local cabinet shop here in town. I was actually the foreman. I was running the floor. I absolutely loved it. And then one day I was talking to Josh Farmer. He was just asking, how's your work going? And I said, like, it's going great. You know, I just wish I could make a little bit more. And uh, we kind of started talking about what I did and how much I paid. And then at the end of the conversation, he goes, would you like to come work for me? I'm like, me? I don't know anything about trucking. I'm a foreigner and all I've done in the States is construction, uh, more specifically uh, cabinetry. And he goes, well, we'll teach you. I'm like, okay. And uh, that's how we started. <laughs> that is so. That is so great. And you know what? You know what's uh, we have this in common. You know how much I know about trucking and logistics. <laughs> Nothing. But you know what's great is every person that goes on comes on is a teacher for me. Yes. And and drivers, of course, love to tell you what they know. Yes. And as soon as you tell them I don't know anything, they love to kind of fill that that void. Well, uh, how did you start? Where did you start? What were you doing? So I started uh, literally at Joyce's and Jordan's Elbow. It was kind of a funny story because the building where we were, it was uh, quite small. And uh, when they hired me, it was kind of like last minute. So mm -hmm. I didn't have a desk. So Joyce was sitting here, Jordan was here, and I literally put a chair in between the two of them. And I was trying to suck out every bit of information I could from the both of them. Okay. So <laughs> now, of course, he's referring to Joyce Sakura, who is now the Vice President of Operations. Correct. And Jordan, uh, he who, was the load planner back then. He was the load planner back then. And one of the things that, if you've been following this podcast, you you've seen is uh, if you need to peel potatoes, you you back in the day you peeled potatoes. Mm -hmm. If you need to mow the lawn, if you need to be on the phone, if you need to broker yeah. loads. But out of that grew a lot of experience, yes. and you learned a lot from them. And then what happened? So. Um, I, uh, Joyce literally took me under her wing and she was teaching me how to be a driver manager. That was her primary goal for me is to take care of the drivers, know what the drivers needs and wants and, and see it too, that it happens, you know, to the best of our uh, ability. And so I would literally just sit and kind of like inch close to her so I could hear what the drivers were saying. So I could, you know, hear both ends of the conversation. And, uh, so you were getting a lot of on-the-job training. You, yes. you were hearing the conversations, what they were saying, asking right. situations, uh, how, how the problems were solved. Yeah. Okay. It was a, a quite a, the experience. It was a total different lingo. I didn't know what bobtail was, what trailer, you know, reefer. I'm, I, have, I was totally clueless, so I would have to ask her, what is that? What did you just say? I don't understand. Explain this to me. And she took the time to explain it to me. And then and it's a whole language. It is. It is. Um, and it's actually one of my challenges these days whenever I go to explain to somebody from my homeland, which if you guys don't know, I'm from Brazil. English is my second language. So when somebody back home asks me, you know, what do you do? And I'm like, I don't even know how to say these things in Portuguese. You know, it's it's totally different. Right. Um, but then Joyce actually got me started with a couple of her drivers that have a lot of uh, years of experience. 
And I basically picked up the phone and said, all right, I'm brand new at this industry. I don't know anything. Can you just talk to me? And we would have conversations that were 30, 45 minutes long, um, just ch chatting about life of a truck driver, what they were doing, what they were seeing. And um, after a little while, those were my four first drivers that I managed. Obviously, I was still under Joyce's wings. Uh, she was teaching me, you know, the nuances of trucking. And uh, from there, just kept growing. Um, a few years later, I actually was um, managing a whole team of the Dole fleet, which which is a, a strategic partner of yes. Freightworks. It's not. We talked about this in other episodes. It's not just a. a we're not just a vendor. We're a partner for them. Yes, absolutely. Um, and we have a whole you know team of drivers dedicated just to that account. It's you know mostly night driving. So. Um, all of my guys, I mean, they all have my cell phone number back from back in the day where I managed them. We were friends, you know, we would talk about life and children and schooling and health care or whatever, you know, it's just like, hey, buddy, how's your day going today? And we developed a real close friendship, you know, between drivers and me as their driver manager. And then it kind of kept the dough fleet kept growing to where I was actually planning and managing the fleet. I was doing the load planning aspect as well as the driver man uh, manager aspect. Um, now, Seals, real quickly. Yeah. We have people that understand trucking and logistics and others that are becoming subscribers to YouTube that don't know that. By the way, real quickly, make sure if you haven't done it, you hit that click button, click the button and subscribe. Explain to people the difference between load planning and driver management. So the best way I can see... Um, this in my own my own perspective is you have to have um kind of like congress and senate right both of them um are designed to have counterbalances so a low planner's main goal is to make sure that your customers are serviced and that whatever loads they have are being run the driver manager takes care of the driver's perspective. Listen, I need to stop and take a break. I um, my, my, my clock is running low. You can't put a load on me. I'm going to take a reset. Um, you know, I got vacation coming up next month. Please remember to tell the load planner not to book a load for me. Uh, so you have to have both parts to work together um, so that you don't have drivers complaining. I don't have loads or drivers complaining. You guys are running me to the ground or the customer saying, you guys aren't running my loads, what's happening, I'm gonna have to find another carrier. So you have to have both parties working together to keep customer happy, driver happy, and office people happy too. You know, I heard someone say one time that it's a little bit like uh, having the load planners and the driver managers, it's it's like having Germans and French talk to each yeah, other. That's pretty you know, close. it's a different language. And <laughs> you know, the load planner may say, oh, the customer said it's gotta be there, we gotta get it, here are the details. And the driver manager is trying to be what we call an ombudsman or a representative for the driver saying right. they're worn out, they got their dog died, other yeah. things are, I mean, it literally stuff gets happens. Stuff, stuff. And But in that, if you have respect and trust, absolutely, out of that grows a solution, it seems, for the drivers. Yes, yes. And that that's how we've, we you know, Freightworks has grown. I've been with the company since November 2017. And uh, we've grown considerably ever since. And I've grown with the company and learned a lot. And thanks to the drivers, really. You know, those 30, 45 minute conversations that I had. And I was, you know, just told them, look, I don't know this industry. You have, you know, you guys are gonna have to teach me. And uh, everybody that I ever said that to, they were very respectful. They took the time. They didn't think, oh, this new kid don't know what he's doing. You know, let's run over. No, that was never that attitude. Great people here, great people. You know, it's so interesting, Silas, because, and folks, you've seen this if you've watched these episodes of Life by the Mile delivered by Freightworks. There's really a spirit of respect yes, and a, a deep value for people that grows up out of a, frankly, a biblical foundation for how the company does what it does. And Absolutely. so, so many of the drivers, when they come in, they may have been beat up at other places. They haven't been told the truth. Promises haven't been kept. And they're a little suspicious. Some have even said, which I've been suspicious just to see, is this really the kind of place that it says it is? But across the board, there's an, it's not perfect, but right, there's absolutely. an attempt 
to do it the right way. Isn't yeah. that true? Yes, we try hard. And my my motto is I'm always going to be 100% honest. And that's the one thing that I've learned that, you know, drivers tell me, you know what, I like you. I'm like, no, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I'm still new to this industry. How do you like me so much? And they told me, because you always speak the truth. We can know that 100%. You're going to tell us black and white what it is, what's going on and why we're doing it. And then it's easy once both parties know why we're pursuing the goal, it's easy for everybody to get on the same page and get it done. And, uh, you know, by just being honest, saying, hey, I don't know this. What do you think? And hash things out. Then we got things done. And then the driver was happy. Uh, the customer is happy. And that developed the trust because they knew I wasn't lying to them. I wasn't trying to paint a story. I just gave facts. And once we know what we act, you know, we, or, what our goal is, it's easier to accomplish it together. You know, it's heartbreaking to hear some of the stories that you hear. We, we have a new driver, I won't mention his name, who came in from another company. It's a name that would be known. And he told me the story about being up near the Canadian border in Maine and the back wheel had no traction and it was dangerous. And he called his driver manager and they said, you got to go at least 60 more miles. And he was just talking about the fact that he knew when he got back from that trip, it was going to be time for him to leave, look for another company. He's come here to Freightworks and he loves it. Talk a little bit about your team. Talk about the team that's there doing what they do that you have management responsibilities for. So right now I have the dispatch uh, manager position. So um, how many of those are there? So I have um, eight people on the floor on first shift. So we have... Um, a OTR load planner and the driver managers for that fleet, the OTR coast to coast. And then we have the Camores load planner and the driver managers for that fleet. The Camores is the, you know, uh, Mississippi and Tennessee, big shippers going all up and down the East Coast. And then we have Doe. Uh, Doe has continued to have one driver manager who is also the load planner because it's such a dedicated run. It, mm -hmm. it kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um so we have eight people on the floor on first shift. Um, and then we have, you know, uh, our customer service department in Shelby, which is not what I manage, but, you know, without them, we wouldn't be what we are. Um, and then we also have two uh, dispatchers on second shift. And we have one, um, one or two dispatchers a night that cover the third shift position. So it's uh, so twenty four seven. We have twenty four seven coverage. So anytime a driver needs something, they can call the phone, knowing somebody's going to be awake and alert to take their phone call. Silas, go ahead for people that are listening uh, on podcast platforms or watching on YouTube. Go ahead and paint the picture of the kinds of things that you have to deal with every week. So um, my my little office, by the way, is right around the corner there from the the driver manager. So I hear all kinds of things, and sometimes it's like the weather comes in, and you just have hail, and I mean literally yeah, and metaphorically, everything yeah. hits at once, and everybody's solving a problem. But help people understand just the pressures that are dealt with by your driver managers, and ultimately you every day. Describing my job is one of the toughest things I've ever been asked because every day is different. Um, every day brings a new set of challenges. You never know what the weather is going to be like, you know, what uh, crashes are going to be on the interstate that, you know, the interstate is closed for eight hours and the customer is saying, oh, you got to get there now or else I'm going to charge a $250 rescheduling fee. And it's like, so we're sending pictures of the of the new head news headlines, you know, uh, fatal crash on I-80 and delay for X miles. And we have to document all of that and send it to the customer. Same thing with the weather delays. We're dealing with that at, in Northern California, at big today. weather. We're big dealing weather. with that today. Actually, we have uh, several loads, I believe five loads that need to be picked up out of Northern California right now. All of our trucks are in Nevada. All the OTR trucks that would have been picking up those loads are in Nevada. You can't get over Donner's Pass. Uh, the alternate routes that you have to do, you're going to have to add about 600 extra out of route mileage. Then the customer is saying, I'm not paying for that mileage. Or, and then the driver is saying, well, I'm not going unless you pay me. And then the driver says, well, it's too dangerous to chain. I don't feel comfortable. We totally respect that. Um, so it's every day is a different set of challenges, mm -hmm. weather, accidents, shipper delays, people being held up at a shipper, you know, they show up and, oh, it's going to be seven hours before you get the product ready. People didn't show up to load today. 
you know, and so you got three people loading, whereas a full crew would have been eight. So what happens? The driver gets stuck. Right. And then the receiver is yelling and screaming, I, I'm shutting down production. Where are you guys? Well, we're trying to leave the shipper, you know, um, and, and two, trying to take care of the drivers. Um, we're really big on uh, safety, make sure that the drivers feel comfortable with what they're doing, make sure that they're not, they're not overly exhausted. Um, you know, sometimes I literally ask the driver, when was the last time you, you took home time? You know, when was the last time you saw family? I mean, family is important. Right. And, uh, I'm, you know, make sure that they have a personal life, that they take care of their personal life, that they have time to do laundry, to buy groceries. So they're not having to eat at truck stops every single day. Um, and, you know, there's a meme, uh, everybody in truck has seen it these days, you know, where there's water up to the hood of the truck and dispatch is calling, I need you to get there. And sometimes that's, you know, the things we struggle with, you know, the drivers and dispatch are on the same page. We know what's happening on the ground, but the receivers and brokers, everybody's saying, I got to have it now. And we're like, unfortunately, we don't provide a helicopter service. <laughs> you know, so. Well, and you know what? It's it feels it, it's an urgent kind of business, isn't it? Yes. I mean, every it's and, and it's not as simple as point A to point no. B. And, and, you know, I, I have to admit this, folks, coming into this new myself uh, less than a year ago. Uh, it used to seem like, well, you just put it in the truck and you have it drive. But then you realize you've got weather, you've got mechanical issues, yes. you've got the human factor, you've got receivers and all, all of the likes. So you're, it's really a lot of problem solving, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the one thing that uh, for a per perfectionist mind it is like, why can't we never solve the problems? Well, every single day you get a different set of problems. And at the end of the day, you got to come up with different set of solutions, you know. Um, of, of course, we always, uh, strive from learn, you know, from our mistakes, if we made any, um, and we always trying to reach out for driver feedback to see what we need to improve. Like literally three days ago, I called the driver and I say, listen, what do you think about your driver manager? You know, what do you like? What do you dislike? Do, does he or she need to improve? And they were like, I, I actually asked them, I said, look, I'm going to sound like a news reporter, but what is, what is the main thing? that we need to do for your life yeah. to be better. Yeah. Um, and they said, you know, if you honor our home time requests every time, that is huge. If you listen to us when we talk and we have a problem, make sure that you give us the time and the attention we need. And what do we, you know, if, uh, what was the third thing? So getting home on time, make sure that they are heard and make sure that everybody in the company knows what's going on. So if you call in and saying, hey, I got home time tomorrow or I got a doctor's appointment coming in, coming up in a week. Everybody knows. Make sure that that's in the computer. Everybody knows that away. Mm -hmm. We don't have a surprise day before the doctor's appointments. And, you know, we are always, you know, striving to get to that, to where the drivers feel that they are heard and that we do what they asked us to do. And Well, you know, I was talking to a driver recently, Silas, and I said, you know, FreightWorks wants to remember that when, when that driver gets home, it may be that through the window of the front door are little children looking at them, yeah, waiting for daddy or mm -hmm. mom to come home. And that that ethic of family is very much a part of what FreightWorks is all about. Talk a little bit, if you can, about the uh, camaraderie between the driver managers. Just how, how is that team? Do they help each other out when they need oh, to? Oh, yes, yes. Talk, talk about that a little bit. Uh, well, I definitely encourage the, the driver managers and low planners to talk a lot. We actually have uh, even some, uh, we use Slack for intercompany communications. Mm -hmm. We have a chat called driver managers where driver managers, low planners, and myself are in there. And that way, if somebody hears of a uh, road closure, we post in there, you know, road closure on I-80 near uh, Crashville, Tennessee, if you know where I mean. <laughs> um, and then we can call the drivers and say, hey, I see you headed to Nashville. You might want to take a detour. Um, and even like, um, you know, I've seen that, especially whenever we hire our, when, when whenever we hire a new driver manager, we, as in a group, we always bring that new guy under our wings and we teach him how to run the software. And then it's a very friendly <coughs> atmosphere. 
you know, if somebody doesn't know how to do it, hey, I forgot how to enter this in the system. Can somebody show me? And oh yeah, we'll be right there. So it's it's a lovely atmosphere. It's it's like you said earlier, it's it's a very fast paced uh, industry. But as far as the people that we have running the floor, we're all very good friends. See, let's talk a little bit about just some of the uh, things that you've experienced this year. What has this year been like in trucking? Um, this year has been uh, pretty different, uh, especially, well, starting last year with the COVID, uh, that literally totally changed the industry. Um, it's been extremely hard to get parts and shipping patterns have been affected. Uh, drivers know it firsthand because of uh, delays in maintenance, even getting parts for, you know, if a truck breaks down or something, you go, you call the parts, everybody's on national back order. Um, so it's definitely become very challenging, but we've been very blessed. We got very dedicated drivers that really appreciate what we do and we all can see that they give their best. And that's made the difference And having that kind of dedication and appreciation has brought us through COVID and we're still in business, whereas a lot of smaller companies folded. And I, I'm a firm believer that's because of the dedications and in, from the drivers and the driver managers, everybody kind of stuck together and let's get through this and we're, we're, we're still getting through it. Well, and what's interesting is a lot of people don't realize that 97% of, uh, if you look at all the trucks in America, the three and a half million drivers or so, 97%, I think the data is, is consistent on this, of companies in America have fewer than 20 trucks. Yeah. So that puts Freightworks even where it is. We've got approximately... 108 last time I counted okay, last week. Right. And uh, and we're all looking forward to that new Peterbilt order oh, in yes. 2022. For those of you that have been interested in that, there are Peterbilt new trucks that are on the way, and you're going to be hearing more about that. Quick reminder, folks, if you haven't subscribed to Life of the Mile Delivered by Freightworks, hit that button. Subscribe, share, like, make comments. We're always interested in building that kind of community. Silas, let me ask you this. As you look at the coming year, what are some of the things uh, that you see? Like, for example, talk about technology, the role of technology in helping you do what you do. Um, well, we live and breathe uh, technology. <laughs> Dispatching these days is actually uh, quite different. I have um, talked to a couple of my older friends that did dispatch back in the day and they were dispatching out of binders and, and maps. I don't have paper in my office. It's all computers. I have three big old screens and well, you know, that's an the, apple. <laughs> what, what, one, one, one of the things that is a stereotype about millennials, which you are, is uh, they feel like everything can be done right here. Yes. And uh, I know I have a lot of friends that are millennials, even as an old guy. And, uh, and and they'll often say, I don't need paper for anything. Right. But uh, so, okay, so technology is really the backbone, yes. the nerve center, isn't it? Yeah. Of helping you do what you do. Yeah, I mean, we, have, we can have so much information so fast. Uh, you know, when, you know, we have a driver, I'm having a hard time, where are you? You know, we have GPS uh, signal on their truck that pins their location within a three to five minute error. So we are quickly able to find out where is the driver, try to look up. We actually tell them, you know, hey, if you stop in five minutes, I'll have an exact ping on you. And so you can pull up Google Maps and find out where the driver is, actually get down there and see what the satellite imagery looks like. And then say, hey, you need to turn left over here and that, you know, turn right over there. And then you're going to be back on the highway. I've done that plenty of times. That's, that's a lot different than it used to be years ago where it was like there's a big oak tree on the right hand corner <laughs> right. and four rocks. Make sure after the fourth rock, mm -hmm. you make a right hand turn. So it's changed. It's changed yes. that way. And of course, we're a McLeod partner as well. Yes. And what does McLeod do for you in a um, nutshell? McLeod is basically the brain of, of the dispatch is the common language that we use between low planners and driver managers. That's how we communicate where is the where the truck is going to be, when it's going to be ready for a next load, what kind of load it's under, who is the customer, how much is being charged. I mean, everything is like without McLeod, without that software, uh, we will be back going back to Stone Age as far as I know. I mean, I don't see another way with this, without a software that powerful. I don't know how we would have managed uh, to dispatch as many trucks as we do. Well, and I was talking to somebody recently and the industry is really one defined by what the market wants is more, better, faster, quicker, for less. Yes. And uh, and so you're in a position uh, in oversight here to try to help 
make make that happen, but do it where the human equation Absolutely. is not lost. Be, you know, drivers, it's so interesting, Silas. Drivers here at Freightworks tell me, I just can't believe people know my name. I yeah. used to be a number. I used to be a truck number. And they are so beat up, some of them, when they come in here. It's like I just felt like I was a commodity being pushed all the time with no care for my family. Right. And that certainly is not our ethic. And we believe, frankly, folks, we're, we're unabashed and unashamed to say it. Uh, we've got a strong conviction, set of convictions here that grow out of personal faith. And uh, that goes right to the founding of the company and Josh Farmer and yes. Papa Ray and, and others of us that are in positions of some influence. I want to talk, uh, you know, I always say this, the mark of a good conversation is they go quickly and the time is escaping us. Yes, yes. Uh, I want to talk about the most important thing that I'm going to ask you about, and that's about Bria and Oliver. So tell us about your sweet family, who I'm so blessed to know. So as I mentioned before, I moved here when I was uh, 18 years old. It was um, 10 years ago, actually. And uh, I was blessed the people that I came in contact with when I first moved here are still my favorite people in the world. Um, Josh Farmer, I've actually known Josh Farmer since I was a little bitty guy, like three or four years old. I uh, called his dad, Papa, since I could, you know, first uh, started speaking. Uh, so we've, we've been a very good family. Moved here, went to Gardner-Webb University, graduated in 2015 with a bachelor's in accounting actually got married uh, exactly one month prior to graduation, quickly ap- applied for the green card, entered the workforce. Um, and then in 2017, that's when our little Oliver was born and uh, he's now four years old, uh, energetic kind of kid like I've never seen, <laughs> but lovely, uh, super smart. I'm gonna say it because maybe you wouldn't. He is, folks, he is absolutely precious and I knew him when he was little, yes. little, little, and uh, he used to call me Ba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ba, not right. Butch, but Ba. Yeah. And it was just so sweet. And you know, it's so consistent, Silas, with the ethic of the company. We never want, as it grows and becomes larger numerically, we never ever want for that spark of commitment to each other as a family to be lost. And Silas, you're just another expression of that today, balancing your home life, balancing uh, a team of people that really are, I I tell folks, they're like air traffic controllers. Mm -hmm. It's like you got jets that are out there and you're having to vector them in. And some days it feels like it's five o'clock at LaGuardia Airport in New York and all the planes are asking, can we land (laughs) now? And I uh, definitely feel it firsthand because I run first shift at Fairgrounds. My wife runs second shift. So, um, yeah, between both of us, our lives spent, you know, we spend 17 hours a day at Freightworks uh, between me and her combined. So, uh, yeah, when Oliver's playing with trucks, you know, he calls me and says, Daddy, Josh didn't drop his trailing Gastonia. He's actually over here in Jonestown, bobtailed, and he's playing, <laughs> playing with his trucks and he's, cars. He's, he's been listening to you. Yes, he's yes. Been, well, you know what? They train them young, they say, and uh, who knows what the days ahead will have. You know, Silas, uh, one of the things that we do for podcast, even people that are part of the family that are podcast guests here, is we have a little gift for you. Oh, and nice. uh, everybody who comes on Life of the Mile delivered by Freightworks, make sure you subscribe, hit that button, uh, gets a genuine Yeti mug. And on the one side, it's got that familiar Freightworks One logo. On the back side, it's got Life of the Mile uh, delivered by Freightworks, and uh, whether it's your uh, lemonade or your coffee or whatever it may be, we want you to have that. Thank you. As a thank you for uh, nice coming away. And I sure hope that when you go back, the report is that everything uh, was copacetic. Everything was just know, good. Right? <laughs> everything was good while you're away. This is Life by the Mile delivered by Freightworks. I want to tell you real quickly, if you go to the Life by the Mile site, you're going to find some blogs that are there as well. The most recent one that was just uploaded is on pets, drivers and their pets. You're going to hear some guidelines that we have about how drivers can effectively love their pets while they're driving on the road. Uh, We want to be a kinder, gentler company. Uh, It's not a perfect place, but it's a place committed to keep its promises. And if you're interested in considering being part of the team, give us a call. Go to the website. And in the meantime, if you haven't subscribed, to make sure you subscribe to the channel, the YouTube channel. We can be found on podcast platforms everywhere. And every time that we're going to be together, it's just going to be an unplugged, open-hearted conversation like I've had with Silas uh, Fritas today. And uh, Silas, I just hope in the days ahead we get to have you come back 
and tell us about a growing team as the fleet grows and as our footprint across America grows. And it's always done with a sense of thankfulness to the God of the universe who gave us the opportunity to be involved in meaningful work and in a way where we can really consistently care for and love each other, which we do. This is Life by the Mile, delivered by FreightWorks. My guest today is Silas, and uh, it's been so great to have you. Thanks for having me. Come back. All right.